<laughs> Hello there, my name is Sixo, but more on that later, as now it's time to get trucked. Yes, for today's consideration we have this rather handsome specimen, which is the latest Generation 1 toy-inspired offering in the X-Transbot Stunticon lineup, as opposed to their original releases, which were styled after the characters' appearances in the 1980s cartoon. Although why XTB have called them youth versions, I do not know, as all it makes me think of is this. How do you do, fellow kids? What? Anyway, that aside, before we begin I should mention that today's review is brought to you by TF Source, so I'll throw a link to their site in the video description below. I'd also be very grateful if you could leave me a like for this video please, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also in the description is a link to my Patreon, where in exchange for your support you can get access to a ton of perks including exclusive galleries and early access to videos such as this. Finally there's a link to my Redbubble store, where you can pick up a huge range of different designs including loads of my photos across all kinds of different merch. All that said, here is Gravestone in his box, and unless you've been in a time warp since the 1980s, then the influence behind today's packaging will be immediately apparent to you, as it's a very close approximation to the equivalent design from the original Transformers toy line back in the day. You see that in everything from the gorgeous sunburst style graphics, along with the various fonts and layout used, all the way through to stuff like the massive flap on top of the box itself, which isn't really something you get on modern toys anymore. There's even a photo sequence of the toy's transformation, just like on the 80s packaging, and then of course you have an almighty box art battle on the back, featuring all kinds of extra Transbots toys, Natch. That's to say nothing of the huge nostalgia one gets from the inclusion of a tech spec, as well as the classic window layout on the front of the box as well. And by now you will have likely noted that this toy comes packaged in alternate mode, which equally is something that happens all too infrequently with modern masterpiece and third party toys nowadays. Once you've got everything out of the box you can see what's included, which here involves a sizeable grey sword, which is one of the Motor Master character's signature weapons, along with a purple hand blaster as well. Pretty simple. Then you have a set of instructions and a character card. And that's your lot. But if you're wondering where the rest of it might be, the trailer and various other accessories are sold separately of course, whether that's something you agree with or not. Not to worry though, as it gives us the opportunity to focus in on the cab section for today, and honestly you're unlikely to be disappointed with what you find in that regard, as the whole thing looks fantastic right out of the box, immediately presenting as a very attractive third party product. And whilst this is a toy I'm already pretty familiar with, as I have the original cartoon inspired version of it in my collection, I'm still well up for appreciating it all over again, even if the differences between them are not yet all that apparent as far as the alternate forms go. Anyway, before we get to that, let's acknowledge what a well proportioned and nicely designed vehicle form we have here. It really does look absolutely fantastic from every angle, and I think might actually be one of X Transport's most accomplished alternate modes in many ways. It holds up to an incredible amount of close scrutiny too, with attractive moulded detailing all over, really nicely applied paint applications in key areas to make it pop, and some superb silver highlights across the entire body, which offset the main black colour scheme very well. I also really like the translucent purple windows on offer, and when you add it all up you're left with an exceptionally good looking overall product in my opinion. It also handles well, with a sturdy solid build and nice freely rolling rubber tyres to keep fans happy. I especially like that you can turn the front wheels too in a rather neat touch. Perhaps my only ever so slight grumble here is the set of fake wheels on the rear, but even then they're hidden relatively well so it's easily forgiven. So all in all it's a great show for what was already a design I admired quite a lot, although again it's interesting here to see just how similar it appears next to the original gravestone when doing a side by side comparison, with the most obvious change being the silver highlights in place of the much darker purple section seen on the first release. It makes a fairly subtle but still noticeable difference, as apart from that they're basically identical when it comes to their vehicle modes, leaving most of the changes to be revealed further down the line. If anything it puts this new gravestone more in line with the alternate mode colours found on competing effort Fans Toys Road King, which also went with a predominantly black and silver scheme for the cab section, and to a less lesser extent the DX9 version as well, although theirs was much darker in palette and of course very long. Then you can see how this thing shakes up versus the 1986 generation 1 toy that inspired it to begin with, and although it's one that I remember fondly from my youth and still have a great deal of affection for today, there's no doubting how much fun it is to see a much larger and more detailed take with Gravestone. Of course the real highlight here is in seeing this figure next to his contemporaries, with the rest of the X Transport's toyetic stunticons rather naturally making the ideal companions for him. There's still one to go in this house, with Flip Out up for review soon too, which I can't wait for as they look simply stunning together in this form. Really then, it's a hugely impressive start for Youth Gravestone, so let's crack on with that transformation to robot mode.
Transformation done, and before we move on to robot mode, it's worth addressing how clever that conversion is overall, especially in the bottom half where the legs have to go through a surprising amount of twisting and turning in order to achieve the correct look and proportions required for the end result. I was fascinated by the very idea of a masterpiece styled Motormaster long before any of the current options had even been unveiled, so seeing them all approach it so differently has been really enjoyable. Although in my mind's eye it was always the solution that X Transbox has opted for that made the most sense somehow, with the cab of the vehicle mode being the bit that turns into the robot form, and the trailer ultimately being reserved for the combined offering. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love what fans toys achieve with their Road King design, especially given that it shrinks an entire cab and trailer into a surprisingly clean humanoid form. Yet the simplicity of XTB's approach also appeals to me, and I think in some ways leaves you with a leaner end product once you're done with it all. All of which is to say that Gravestone here is looking on fine form. I've been especially looking forward to this youth-styled release, and in hand, boy does it not disappoint. He looks fabulous. Now as I mentioned, I'm a big fan of the standard cartoon release already, although the differences between these two become a lot more apparent now that we have them transformed up. The changes in colour scheme are obvious for anyone to see here, as the new take chases that toyetic look pretty hard. You can really see what they're going for once you plonk it next to that original 1986 Motormaster toy, which despite its all too obvious ridiculousness is still an absolute classic of a thing. To say that there's a huge amount of nostalgic value to be drawn on from what x have achieved here is an understatement statement, as it really does feel like they've captured the spirit of that vintage design. It's almost enough to make Youth Gravestone feel like an entirely separate toy, completely distinct from the first release in so many ways, despite only comparatively small surface elements of the moulding having actually been reworked here. Still, you will find new parts on areas such as the chest, which now has a more obvious pair of robo nipples, and some additional toy style detailing just underneath, as well as on the arms, with new vents and some robotic touches meant to emulate the look of the 1986 figure stickers and even smaller touches such as the hips, where again, there's additional detailing going on, all of which is very appreciated. Then you have an entirely different face design, still set inside that familiar boxy cowl, which looks very unique and quite on point versus the G1 toy in so many ways. There are some critiques to be had with this robot mode though, with perhaps the most obvious being the rather sizeable backpack that sharply juts out to a fair degree behind the back of his legs, to say nothing of the obvious cab front on the top of the body around the neck area, which does look a little strange. Still, all told, it's a fantastic fantastic look, with a really nice finish, decent paint applications, and just generally a sense of polish to it. x transports often get decidedly mixed feedback on some of their releases, and have had their issues over the years, but I can't help but feel if every figure was as solid and well put together as this, then everyone would be more than happy. The joints are all really tight too, with near perfect tolerances across the entire toy. You can get a very decent amount of articulation with some nicely clicky ratchets when they're required, all allowing for a really nice posability in the top half of the body, bringing this classic 1986 design to life. I'm less keen on the weird ab crunch mine, as it's strange to see the body being literally split in half via one hinge just above the waist, but still, it's there. The legs are maybe not quite as dynamic as the upper body, but still, they give you more than enough range for any number of decent poses, and I think when you consider how awkward the Motormaster design has the potential to be, XTB have done an outstanding job with this one overall. All told, he poses really nicely, and looks especially imposing once you equip him with those sizeable weapons. They both clip in very securely to his palms and do a great job at recalling to mind the equivalent accessories from the vintage toy, ridiculous gun proportions and everything. It's the final touch needed to really send this figure into overdrive for how it brings that 1986 figure smack up to date, and makes this a really suitable homage to an absolute classic of the early Transformers line. It's also a fantastic update to what was already a pretty nifty design with the original Gravestone, and I must admit that seeing these two side by side now, I'd be hard pushed not to tell you that I think it's swiftly becoming my favourite in many ways. Of course he looks right at home next to the rest of the XTB youth lineup, and with just one team member left to go, I'm feeling very positive about this lot overall. It felt like an insane prospect to jump on yet another set of these toys at the beginning, but in a lot of ways they're shaping up to be the best version yet in my opinion. Naturally that also makes Gravestone a shoe in for displaying next to the likes of MP36 Megatron and other toy style Decepticons, not to mention the recently reviewed Robot Paradise Acoustic Wave in his retro guys. I can't believe how much of a thing this aesthetic is becoming in Master piece form, but long may it continue. All told then, I'm really happy with the new release of this figure. If anything, it just makes me wish that we could get this level of execution and delivery from x Transbots on a much more consistent basis, but hey, you have to celebrate it when it happens at least. It's a toot.
Now, as already mentioned, you'll find the link to TF Source's site in the video description below, so check them out for all your Transformers and third party needs. There are also links to both my Patreon and my Redbubble store, so be sure to take a look at those if you want to support me in exchange for some awesome perks and merch. Finally, I'd love it if you could drop me a like for today's video, please, and don't forget to let me know your thoughts on this toy. Do you like what you see or not so sure? Otherwise, that's it from me, so thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day. TTFN. <laughs>